Jericho. Uh, Jericho yeah, six. Before Jericho, yeah, chapter five, I think. Ah, I said, wow, it is true. So whenever you see the Lord appearing, because even you see even the Lord Jesus, when the Lord appears, the when the Lord appears, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus, you, you see the whole message that ensues henceforth, the, the, the whole message of salvation that comes out of that, the revelation of the Godhead, how the, the cloud of the, of the Father came down, and the, and, the, and the Holy Spirit came down, and, and you can see that out of that revelation, or in the at baptism, came that whole message of the Gospel, in a very powerful way. Or you can see in on Mount Sinai when he came down with such fire, yeah, and and, 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 and terrified the Israelites. After he terrified them, you can see the conversation that followed. They feared, and the command he gave them is to command them to fear the Lord that if you just break even one. You will dance to the music. <laughs> oh yes. And and I love how the how the how the how the angel spoke to, to, to Joshua. He said, Neither. Oh mm -hmm. it's in this uh, okay, thirteen. Yeah. Because, because when he said that, because after the second battle, uh -huh. after the first battle, uh -huh. Akan uh -huh. decided to take things that were not lawful for him. Yeah. And the Lord rejected the whole nation. He just took Israel out of Egypt and they're in the wilderness under his care and then Achan or Achan, Achan sins and the Lord says, no, that's not how we roll here. That's not how we do things here. He did not hesitate to say, ah, should I really do this to Israel? They sent their soldiers and they were defeated. He says, no, I only stand with the Lord. <laughs> Really, he really stands with the Lord. Where is that? Joshua 5 from 13. Joshua 5 from 13. Yes, please. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, he really stands only with the Lord. Only with the Lord. And really, and this is what the Lord wants from us. The Lord does not want that uh, we defend sin. You know? He wants that if you sin, eh, that no matter how you know close brothers we are and you know good friends we are and how you know long we can stand here sit here and chat and encourage one another in the faith if you sin i must be bold enough like this man to say no i only stand with the lord i need to rebuke your sin I, you must stand with the lord enough to be able to rebuke your your closest companions because there is no favoritism. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because when you stand with the Lord, it's not about uh, how long you've been friends. That's why you find even the children of Israel, they were ready, they were ready to fight the Zebulun, or was it Gideon, the children of Gideon. Somewhere then Joshua was also young, is it 22? They were ready to stand against their, their, their brothers if they sinned against the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah, boy. So the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. So whenever you see the the, the, vis the visitation of the Lord coming up or coming down, then, then just know that there is a message coming out of there. 
because we see that in the book of Revelation that whenever he he speaks to the churches he, he begins with himself yeah we said he begins with referring back to the revelation in verse one in chapter one and then he speaks the message to the church yeah and we said that uh, when he does that he does not do this he does not speak to Hannah and then use uh, Pauli as the standard and say oh I see Hannah you are less than Shipimbo mm -hmm. or less than Pauli or you are not doing as well as Christian no he doesn't do that mm -hmm. he doesn't take churches and begin to compare them he 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 refers the church back to himself thereby setting himself as the standard by which the church should measure up you know so these things of saying you know no no what what is say no 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 I'm not asking if you are better than most people I'm not asking if you are better than many churches. I'm not asking if you have at least, you know, done one good thing. Say, no, have you measured up to the standard of holiness? Because the church that will enter is not a church that barely makes it, but a church that is mature. That's the word we were left with last time, yeah? The word perfection, yeah? That's where we were, we, that's where we, 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 we left off last time, that when, when now he's saying, I have not found your works perfect, what, what does he mean? How can you say that? In this world where we take pride in our sins, I'm not perfect, so leave me alone. <laughs> yeah? Say, so we we, what do they call them? Mistakes, right? <laughs> My pastor told me it's a mistake. No, no such things. <laughs> No, sin is just sin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a mistake. Amen. Amen. Okay, let, let's read it together. Again, verse 1 to verse 6. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, and thank you, Lord, for your word. I think, I, I, I think you should start for us. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, This thing says, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive but you are dead. Verse 2. Wake up, strengthen what have left before it dies completely. I have, I have found that what you are doing is less than what my God wants. Verse 3. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I'll come upon thee. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who do not, who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Everyone who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. Who has ears. So yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It says, For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. And, uh, and the Amplified says, For uh, I have not found a thing that you have done, any work of yours meeting the requirements of my God or perfect in his sight. Amen. So this word that is so scary to us that when someone asks us if we are perfect, we run to defend our sins. No, everyone is, you know, we are all sinners. So don't act all holy here. <laughs> are you saying you have never sinned in your life? If someone asks them, are you perfect? What do you mean? Are you saying you have never sinned? <laughs> I'm a human being. But but we said, but if the Lord was speaking to human beings, then why would he say such a thing? Why would the Lord speak to human beings? Human beings that know so well that they are perfect, imperfect. Yeah? Human beings that know so well that they are imperfect. Why would he say to them, your works are imperfect? Why does he need to reiterate what they already know? But last time, uh, uh, we spent time to explain why 
he was saying this to Sardis because Sardis is the church of Christ. Sardis was not just anyone out there. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is the church. He was not speaking to some drunkards that just came out of the bar. He said, hey, you drunkard, why are you not perfect? <laughs> Amen? Amen. He, he was speaking to his church. This is the church he purchased with his own blood. Amen? Purchased. He says, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. You have been purchased. That's what he says. Amen? Amen. He says, your body belongs to the Holy Spirit who has been given to you. Why then should you take the body of Christ and unite it with a prostitute? Why? What does idolatry have to do with the house of Christ? What does deception have to do with the house of Christ? What does... Uh, Satanism have to do with the Church of Christ. What does homosexuality have to do with the Church of Christ? What does idol worship have to do with the Church of Christ? What does Islamic religion have to do with the Church of Christ? Or, or what does drinking alcohol have to do with the Church of Christ? Know ye not. And when we read it also from First Peter, I think it's 1, 15, 16, it says, it says, it says, for ye, it says what? Yes. For be ye holy, for I am holy. I am holy. Or be ye perfect. Man. Yes. Just as he who has called you is holy. We read that. So, so that, that helps us understand the background from which this command is coming, this rebuke is coming from. This rebuke to the church in Sardis is coming because Sardis is the church of Christ. Exactly because it's the church. Amen? That, that distinction matters a whole lot. Because when we're talking about the book of... Uh, Genesis, the gospel in Genesis, we saw that three times like this. He mentioned separation. Separate from darkness. Separate from your old companions. Separate from your sins. Separate from the jokers in the church. Like this three times. Let the darkness separate from there. Let the light separate from the darkness. Let the water separate from the waters. Let the water separate from the land. Separation, separation, separation. Meaning that this is the fundamental way. This is the foundation. This is where your Christian life begins. Separation. The foundation he builds in your life is the foundation of separation. That if that separation is not there from the word go, then perhaps you are not saved. If he has not separated you, eh? today you are born, yesterday you are born again, today you are claiming to be born again, eh? yesterday you are not born again, today you are claiming to be born again, then we look at you like this. Eh? <laughs> we look at you, but when we look at you, Genesis is not being shown forth. Because it says in Genesis, he created the lights, amen, to rule the day and rule the night. He says, I love what it says. I don't know whether it's NIV or what, what, what translation it says. He made the light to separate seasons. He says, to separate even the day from the night. Meaning, the light that he, had, he is shining through us is even supposed to speak of the separation. He says, even just by looking at you they look at you and they begin to ask they say they, they look at you it's your first day at work eh? you have not even begun to work yet you have not even said a word you have not even uh, uh, you are not even carrying a bible no are you inviting anyone to church it's just your first day at work and while you, you, you are just sitting down to have your lunch, it's break time now. And then someone says, are you a pastor? <laughs> are you a pastor? And then looks at another person and says, he looks like a pastor, doesn't he? They have to say that. Amen? 
and, and, and even for you, even though you know that you are walking in holiness, it, it, even, it even surprises you like, oh, where is it written, Pastor, on me? <laughs> Amen? Mm. That they, you don't even have to explain yourself. They just look at you. Are you a pastor? Or you are walking? And then they say, say, and they say, say, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I have something to, to say to you here. You know, when I saw you walking from there, something just told me, stop that man, he will pray for you, and you will be healed. Ah, how can someone just stop you like that? Except that the light of Christ truly really is shining through you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes. You see? So when they look at you, the light is already shining. So now the question, that's why now he's asking Saradis. So why are you not emitting the light of Christ? So essentially that's what's coming out here. He says, I look at your deeds, but now this is powerful. He says, I know your deeds. I have not found any of your works meeting the requirements of my God. And now if we go back to Genesis that we read, we say, after he separated us, then he said, bring forth fruit. Amen? Mm -hmm. The church that will enter is indeed the church that we said has been conformed to the image of Christ. Yeah? And this is the process. Separation. Amen? And then he says, let them bring forth fruit. Seed bearing fruit. Now he's commanding the earth. Let it bring forth seed bearing fruit. Meaning, after he separated you, now he is working in you the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Now he is causing you to live a life that brings forth different results. Amen? Mm -hmm. A life now whose results, he says, whose leaves shall not wither and brings forth fruit in its season. He says, they shall be like trees planted by the rivers of running water. Amen? Amen. Whose leaves shall not wither, but bring forth fruit in, in their season. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So now, he says, now let them bring forth fruit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then when he says, let them bring forth fruit, that's the thing. Then he says, Aha, uh -huh, yes, thank you. Then, then he says, then he says, then he says, let the light shine. You see that? So you see here, let them bring forth fruit. And then he says, let the light shine. You, you, you see that? The, the, the light shining comes by a virtue of bearing fruit. Meaning, this bearing fruit, as you are bearing fruit in Christ Jesus, you walking in holiness, as you are bearing fruit, thereby your light begins to shine. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you cannot separate your, sh your light from the fruit, your deeds from the, from the light. Meaning, if the light of Christ has to shine through you, then certain works must be manifested in your life. Failure of which will, will guarantee... Eh, Darkness. I mean, if the light, if the fruit, if those deeds in your life are absent, then the light will not show. Amen? So these two are like this, inseparable. Inseparable. So, so that's why now he says to Sardis, I know your deeds. Amen? He says, I know your deeds. But... Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, I know your deeds. And then he says, I have not found your deeds finished. I have not found your deeds perfect. But essentially you realize that he is really talking about holiness. Because we say this word perfect now really means, it, 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 he is not speaking about sardis. You have, you, you, he is not rebuking sardis for being for once being a sinner before she came to Christ. Amen? Yeah. He's not saying, he, he is rebuking Sardis for not walking rightly after her salvation. Amen? When the Lord is talking about perfection in Christ, He is not talking about your life before Christ. 
Amen. He's talking about your life in Christ. So regardless of whatever you have done before that, that one has been forgiven by the blood. Amen. Amen. And now he's saying, despite the flesh, yeah, this flesh, despite, despite the lasting flesh, the flesh that loves to lust, despite the flesh that is greedy, despite the flesh that likes, that, that, that is so easily enticed by sin, he says, despite that, he has called you into a life of perfection. Perfection in holiness, he says in the book of 1 Corinthians 7. Amen. Matthew 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. This perfection, that because, because there, there is a misconception huh? that, 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 that indeed that when you, when, when, when you speak about perfection, People begin to go from the day you were born until now. Mm -hmm. They say, are you telling me that you have never done anything wrong? That's not the question. When Christ is talking about perfection in holiness, he's not talking about never having been a sinner ever in your life. Then if we have never been sinners in our lives, then what is the need for the gospel to begin with? Amen? And by the way, it is commanding uh, perfection exactly because we were sinners so that we do not remain in sin that's the whole perfect that, that's the whole purpose amen he does not want us to be the pig that goes back to wallow in the mud or the dog that returns to its vomit he says good you have vomited the you have vomited out this now thing that has been disturbing you now don't go back amen and give it some more poison now that you have been washed from your filth, now don't go back and wallow again. What's your problem? <laughs> Amen. So then you can really see that he's really dealing with the matters of the heart to begin with. Amen. Because out of the heart comes the issues of life. Now you can see that a heart that is truly set after Christ does not fix itself on sin. Amen. A heart that is truly set on Christ is a heart that is committed to seeking for a thousand ways to walk in holiness. Amen? Because when you have not been converted to Christ, you are always looking for ways to, 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 to traverse the boundaries. Yeah? Oh, my mother said I should not drink alcohol. I, I wonder whether beer is also alcohol. <laughs> You'll be asking such questions. You know? No, no, what about the other one? It's really sweet. I, you know, I won't drink too much of it. Don't sin. Don't commit sexual immorality. I, I, are you saying I should not even you know, download her picture on, on Facebook? <laughs> Say, what's your problem? Don't sin now. <laughs> you know, just looking for ways to, you know, how far can I go without sinning? Instead of, you know, thinking differently. And when you, in, you, in your new way of thinking as Christ wants us to think, he says, when you look at, you know, when you have been transformed now, he wants you to think differently. Say, Lord, please, just take away anything that, that is displeasing to you. I, I don't even want to try. Just take it away. Amen? Mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't want you to go over to Facebook, YouTube, and, 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 and search. Which one is a real pornography? You know, let me just see the line between a, a real pornographic video and one that is not really pornographic. <laughs> Can I watch this music video? Now, the fact that you are asking really tells me that something is wrong with this music video. <laughs> but you really want to see how far you can go. Amen? Mm -hmm. But when, when Christ has truly transformed you, then you, 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 you begin to ask, Lord, just... Take away. In fact, you, you already begin to feel it that ah, I think I need to stop listening to Eminem. It's already, it's already speaking to you. I think even Rihanna needs to go. I think even though Celine Dion is not, is not insulting, I think I really need to stay away from this one because how is this one really enriching my life with Christ? Because your, your, your concern now is how does this enrich my life with Christ and prepare me for the rapture? Amen. Because you can really see the difference between a heart that has really been transformed and one that is still playing with fire. <laughs> Amen. 
Because this one is asking, you know, because this, this, this one is saying, you know, they are not insulting. They are not insulting. Me, me, I don't like those ones that are insulting. They are just like those ones that make me feel loved. <laughs> you know, those ones that, that when I sing it, I really feel like I'm lonely or whatever. No, is it? No. Is it spirit? Is it godly or ungodly? Ungodly, okay, trash. Junk, amen? I, have, I know your deeds. Now, our life in Christ is by faith, truly. Amen? But we must never forget that faith without works is dead. Amen? Amen. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. dead. Yeah. Say, he is graduated from medical school by faith. Yes, and they are saying there's a woman here that needs to uh, that needs cesarean section. So yes, I'm a doctor by faith. <laughs> let us see. Let us let us let us do some C-section here, doctor. Are you just a doctor by mouth, or will your doctorship be ex? You know. Be, 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 what's the word? Be testified by your works now. Yeah? You are giving medication. The, 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 the patients are dying. You say, yes, I'm a doctor. <laughs> in fact, they have, a special, they have a special team in the medical field just to deal with doctors who are malpracticing to make sure they don't practice ever again. <laughs> or, or whatever. I mean, or to withdraw their licenses. Even in medicine, they do such things. Amen. Yeah, they make sure that they, they always they, they, they always make sure that you are really qualified. Yeah, because you cannot say you are a doctor yet patients are dying. Now, how can you say you are a Christian, <clears throat> but your light is not shining? We are still seeing sin in your life. Oh, those two really don't go together. So you can see really the, the importance. See, deeds are not evil. But, but the, Christ wants us to do works that that testify to holiness. Amen. And of course, this has been already a settled discussion that it's not that our deeds make us perfect. When he says, I know your deeds, he's not saying your deeds do not make you perfect. No, that your deeds are not testifying of this salvation. And therefore now you are in sin. You because we need to maintain this. This holy standard, this, this holiness standard that we've been called unto. Amen? Yeah. By the way we live, by the way we behave, by the way we handle the word of God, this testify whether we have our, our faith, this, testi this gives true, true testimony, a true stamp to our faith. Amen? He says, so this perfection, so, the word, if you go to the book of first, first Ephesians, chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, you realize that the, the word pay, pay, uh, perfection, as I said, really means holiness. Why do I say so? Because uh, in the Greek or in the whatever, in the Greek and all these languages <laughs> from which the Bible was translated, uh, you, you see some of these languages are very rich. Or maybe... Or maybe not so. But this, some of these languages, of course, they are not like English. Amen? So the, the word that was translated could really mean a lot of things. Could mean perfection. Could mean holy. Uh, could mean uh, mature, mature. Could mean full stature. Amen? And that is really the encapsulation. This is what really encapsulates this word. This is where really the, the definition of the word perfection. For me, I really believe that. This is where the true definition of perfection is. Amen? When someone, when someone is perfect, doesn't mean they don't have pimples. Amen? When, true perfection. Amen? True perfection is not really defined by whether you can make beds and not, I mean, you can, you can like a glass maker, and not, not have one glass broken. I mean, it's an accident to happen. Amen? But a true perfection is what the Bible teaches us here. When the Ephesians chapter 4 says that when Christ calls his, his pastors, his apostles, his prophets, his teachers, and his evangelists, 
He called them so that they will what? So that they will to equip, they will equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and to become mature. What does your say? To a perfect man. And to a perfect man. That's mature nice. man. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Is that amplified? You are reading? No, New King James. New King James. A perfect, yes. I think even King James said, even King James said, a perfect man. Unto a perfect man. Amen? Mm -hmm. Here it says, uh, yes, the, the measure, a mature man. My, my, my Bible here, in the NIV and NASB says, mature man. Amen? So you can see there that a mature man is a perfect man. But how do these two come together? We'll, we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, yeah, Amplified says that it may develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God that we may arrive at really mature manhood. Listen to this now. The completeness of personality which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. The measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in him. Ah, I love the Bible. It really removes all the ambiguity. The, 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 the word, why, how, how, how come the word perfection means mature? And how does that talk about holiness? Look at this. From what I've just read, they say completeness. Amen? The real picture of the word perfection. Amen? The real picture of the word perfect is the word complete. Perfect means not lacking anything. Amen? Meaning, not lacking, uh, 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 not needing any further modification. Meaning, one that has all that it needs. One that has, that, that has it all together. Has it all together. Has it. Amen? One that does not lack. One that is complete, meaning that's where the word maturity comes in. Because when you talk about maturity, now you're talking about a process of growth where you are growing, and then you come to a place where there is maturity now. Now you have you have reached that place of fruition. Amen. That full that's why now he is called he calls it the full stature of Christ, the high standard. Amen. So the word perfection is really the word uh, complete. Meaning, having it all, everything that you need to thrive, everything that you need to continue, everything that you need to walk this journey, everything that you need to carry out your mission. Amen? Complete. When we say the Lord God is perfect, holy, meaning He is sufficient in and of Himself. That's why we call Him Father. Meaning, He does not lack. Meaning, the word Father means source. So when we say the Lord is our Father, meaning He is the source of all things. Meaning, He Himself does not depend on anyone. Amen? He Himself does not depend on anyone. He is the Creator. He is the source of all things. He is perfect. He is high. He is complete. He is here, having the full stature. That is the stature to which he is calling us then. The me now, when we are walking in holiness, when we are walking in perfection, it means really that we are walking in the image of God. Meaning, we are walking in the stature of Christ. Meaning, we are walking in the standard of God because his standard is high. Of all kinds of perfection you find in the world, there is none higher than the standard of Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. His is the truly highest standard. Any other standard falls short. His is the truly perfect standard, complete standard, one that lacks nothing. That's what he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In him I am perfect. In him I have everything that I need. In him I am satisfied. My provision, I have all the provision that I need. Amen? So now when he calls, when he says, when, when now he is saying that Sardis is walking in imperfection, it's like Sardis is walking, walking in wantonness. As if she has not received any everything that she, she the Lord as if she has not received everything that she needed to 
to walk a holy life. Tragedy. You see this now? Now this is where now, as we, as we round up, where Isaiah chapter 5 comes in. Now, look. We are talking about the word, what? Perfection. The word complete. The word mature. While we are going to, to the book of, 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 of Isaiah, you remember the words in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where the apostle Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child, I, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish what? Childish things. Meaning, he now became mature. He now became a perfect man. He now became a grown-up man. Now he's a man that has come of age. You see, he a man that has really come, has become mature, has become perfect in, in a sense. Amen? The perfection in holiness he talks about in first. First Corinthians chapter seven, Isaiah. Now you see this, conf this, this, uh, this. Uh, what is the word? The conflict that the Lord has with the church in Sardis and the church today, that is not walking in holiness, is this conflict articulated well here in Isaiah chapter five? Amen. No, no, no. This is when now the word. This is now the picture of perfect, complete. Amen. Is is really well, well demonstrated. The Lord is saying, the Lord has a, the Lord has a, has a dispute, so to say, the, with the house of Israel. What is the dispute? He said, I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. Even the way it starts, such a loving song, amen, mm. a love song. Powerful. You can see that it really comes from his heart. But uh, I'm impressed the way it ends. This on the fertile hillside. The, the way the, you can already see that this was placed in a very good place. This vineyard was really in a good place. Just at the beginning already. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out and wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded a only bad fruit. Now you, he says, now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for the vineyard than I have done for it? This is the Lord asking. Church of Christ in Sardis, what more could I have done for you? Eh? You see that? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now, I tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge he even put a hedge of protection. Uh -uh. And I will, and it will be what? Destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. This vineyard was safe. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated. And briars and thorns will grow there. Ah, that's hypocrisy and, and, and what? And, uh, and deception now. Apostasy now. Eh? I will command the clouds not to rain on it. That is closed heavens now. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation Israel. And the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in. And he looked for justice and saw bloodshed. For righteousness but had Christ of distress. He says, I know your deeds. Your works are not perfect. He says, I looked for righteousness, but I found thieves. I looked for righteousness, but I found people misusing and abusing their wives. Speaking to the church now. He says, I looked for justice. I saw blood shed. Pastors have blood on their hands. Pastors, their eyes are just looking at the offering basket. 
The widows are crying. Their homes in the days are away. They have sown all their houses into the pastor's life. And now they are in the street. And then one video I watched, this man is so rich, the people in the church, they call him daddy. He has, he has uh, uh, homes that he's renting to church members. And one church member delayed to pay and she was kicked out of the house and she's in the street and she's an old lady. And his seat, no one can touch it. Because if someone touches it, he has violated daddy's seat. He's looked for righteousness. You see what they are saying? So he looked for justice and righteousness. But we know that the righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Many, the church, this is deep, yeah? Because it says, many, the church, must observe righteousness and justice. This is the perfect, this is the perfect standard. Now, if you're talking about righteousness and justice, you're really talking about the standard of the throne of God because nothing that he ever does is against these two. Righteousness makes sure everything is right. Justice makes sure that every sin is punished. Every sin is punished. Amen? Now you see that. The, 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 what was the word? The conflict there. It says, he has protected the church. He even saved her with his own blood. And he even put a hedge of protection from the devil. Walls, he says, your, your, your gates are praise and your walls are salvation. Even the blood to heal her is there. Deliverance is there. Healing is there. Protection is there. Eh? When someone tries to fight against her, he destroys the enemy. Eh? He gave her everything that she needs. He says, what more could I have done? He really poured out himself for the church. And then he comes to the church, he finds thorns. And briars, liars, women wearing miniskirts. So now, from where? He says, from where now? How, how really do you measure this? You pay your blood, and then they give you thorns. You pay your blood, and then they give you liars. No, that doesn't work in the kingdom. Amen? Meaning, if we are truly going to be a church that enters into the kingdom of God, we must observe righteousness and justice. We must observe holiness. We must observe righteousness. Amen? 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 1 says, We must observe perfection in holiness, staying away from anything that defiles both the body and the, and the spirit. Amen? Amen? Then, the deception that has ransacked Sardis will not ransack our lives. Ransack. Amen? Meaning, take over run over. Then, the apostasy that took over, was that, Smyrna, will not take over your life. Amen? Then, the, 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 the pastors of, 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 of prosperity will not have you for lunch. Amen? Then, when heaven looks at you, heaven smiles. I love one thing the, the, the prophet of the Lord said, prophet of the Lord says, he says, the world around there it's all full of sins. I don't think he really said exactly like that. But the world out there is sinful. You know? There's so much chaos in the world. When he looks at the church, at least the church should give him a smile. At least the church now. Because the world here, they're killing, they're stealing, they're in the corruption here, there. At least now when he comes to the church, he must look at the church and his heart must be soothed. At least when he comes to Hannah, he says, Oh, at least I have Hannah that I can always count on. Amen? At least I have a Christian that I can always count on. And even if everyone is going into sin, Christian knows when I come from school, I go into my room and I kneel down and I pray and I seek the Lord my God. Hallelujah. That at least the church must give him a smile. And, 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 and his heart will be, and then he'll be like this. He'll be like this. Do you know my servant, Paul? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Have you heard that before? It says, do you know my servant, Holy? This one, he will never deny me. At least he must have someone, you know, 
to, to, to be proud of. Isaiah 19, he says, I looked. I couldn't even find one person. He says, now I have to take things into my hands now. Yeah, now I must destroy. <laughs> now everyone must die. At least he found comfort in Noah. So at least I have my servant Noah. He will build me an ark. At least I have my servant here. He will lead my devotion. Even if others live, I know he will still be faithful. Even if others live, I know he will still lead the service. Even if others live, I know he will still lead prayers. Even if others live, I know he will still go on his knees. Even if all the people that got born again together with him, they, 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 want, they backslide. This one is pregnant, this one is drinking alcohol, the one is smoking, the one is stealing in the bank. At least I have this one. He is still faithful to me. Amen? I love the Lord. He really saved us. Amen. Let us, let us be the ones that at least give the Lord a smile. You know, he looks at me and he says, I know room 1113. That one is my room. <laughs> he says, that one is mine. Or even your phone. I say, that Samsung ga Galaxy whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Even if all other phones are filled with pornography, at least I know that this one will send scriptures and and glorify me. Hallelujah. At least I know that the first thing that will be open on this phone is the Bible. But I know that the owner of this phone will open the Bible first before he opens his phone. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. When you woke up like this, yeah. It's not, where is my phone? Who texts me? <laughs> no. So when you wake up like this, ah, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You're on your knees. I bless you, Lord. I take your Bible and you read it. The Lord looks at you and says, at least I have my servant who remembers me every day in the morning. When he wakes up, the first thought in his mind, the Lord. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, for he has delivered me. Amen. He really delivered me. And we have so much to, to, to bless the Lord. If anyone says, ah, the Lord, I cannot bless him for anything. I mean, that one is the biggest lie ever. And you say you never have anything to bless the Lord for. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your word, Lord.